Hi, so I am uh, here with Henning Ludvigsen. Uh, it's a great pleasure um, because Henning is the artist who has designed the uh, tiles for Elia Chronicles and who is hopefully going to do a little bit more work uh, for Elia Chronicles after the Kickstarter that we're going to talk about uh, in a moment. And Henning, uh, you have a really, really impressive and long CV uh, when it comes to board game projects. Uh, hi James. Yeah, uh, thank you. <clears throat> yeah, it's been a it's been a few games throughout the years. Uh, yeah, I don't even can't even remember when I started, but um, I guess early two thousands I started working with board games, and since yeah. then it's just been going on. Well, I've known about your work much longer than I've known about you. Um, and uh, I sort of started to recognize a style and, and think, you know, I played Tannhauser years ago and then I got oh, yeah. Imperial Assault and I thought, is this the same artist? I think it is. Um, <laughs> and uh, I then looked, at, looked it up on Board Game Geek and it was. Um, and I said to myself then, if I ever do that kind of game, that is the man that I want. Uh, to do uh, our our uh, tiles and artwork, uh, and of course I'm you know our little game is not in the same league as those those huge titles, um, and so thank you for uh, working for a little guy and and uh, doing a much more uh, sort of modest project. Yeah, no, thank you. You know, it's I love working on it's it's projects that you know that attracts me and this is a really cool setting it's something unique and uh, it's uh, it's a lot of fun to work on so well, thank you for for reaching out to me i know no most welcome i'm, I'm going to name drop a little bit to give people an idea of what you've done i've already said tannhauser and imperial assault you also did the the latest the sci-fi zombie side uh zombie side invader uh you yeah. did some of the tiles for a song of ice and fire um mm. What else? Uh, Mansions of Madness. Uh, you the is that the second edition or the first or both? First edition. Apparently, I said no to the second edition, which bugs me today. But uh, yeah, <laughs> the first, first edition. Game. No, it's, it's over two hundred fifty games by now, and yeah. you know, it's it's hard for me to. I need a list. So yeah, yeah anything yeah. mentioned sounds right. <laughs> uh, yeah, Battlestar Galactica is another one on my shelf. Uh, game of yeah. Thrones, the board game, is another one on my shelf. Um, and uh, the list goes on and on, but you also don't just do uh, board art and 2D art, you also, well, 2D art, yes, but you also do uh, really beautiful illustration work and uh, character design and things like that as well. Uh, well, yeah, I, I do all kinds of things. You know, I do characters. Uh, I kind of gotten into board games. I started as a character artist for the Game of Thrones card game and called Cthulhu, the card game. Mm. It was mostly into characters. And then I got to do Cave Troll, I think was my first ever board game for Fantasy Flight Games. And since then, it just I turned into this board game guy. And I really, appreciate, I really enjoy doing board games for some reason. So I do, I do prefer the boards, but I also do characters. I also do covers. Um, but I, I, also, you know, like I also work full time. We have a computer game studio, so I make yeah. computer games as well. Uh, awesome. So awesome. board games is kind of my second job. Yeah. Kind of Sorry, thing. we're being we're being joined by my cat, who's decided oh. to make make her presence felt loudly. <laughs> uh, she always she's been quiet all day, and as soon as I start recording, she decides to be a pest. Um, That's a beautiful <laughs> cat. My guy is sleeping on the cat tree over here. So yeah, <laughs> yeah, He's you're, you're the lucky one. This this one is uh, <laughs> she's she's beautiful. She's not very well behaved. <laughs> ah. <laughs> uh, but anyway, what I thought we would uh, talk about today um, is a little bit about your uh, your workflow, uh, about the way that you uh, design board game assets, and, and you. I think you've got some some examples of the tiles that you've done for us to kind of talk talk us talk us through that. So that's pretty exciting. Yeah, I prepared a few things. I can just go through things and show you if you like. Yeah, great. I'll I'll share my screen. So I guess you see the, uh, I usually combine 3D and 2D workflows. Yeah. Um, so I, I usually, like, this work works especially well if it's like a, like a tile-based mm. project, which this is not, but it still saves a lot of time if you have a lot of detail, which this game <laughs> definitely have. Yeah. You have an overgrown jungle, and you know, if you are to draw every single detail by hand, it's going to take forever. Yeah, and that wouldn't benefit any of us. So basically, I 
I always start off with uh, making everything in 3D. Uh, and I had, it's kind of a kit patch process. We have something that's overly detailed. You see like all these little nuts and bolts and yeah, stuff I have here, yeah. which is not visible in the final version. But it's basically it's the kit patching process where you, you have things you put together and you model some things and you, you kind of put this together. And I also put out some some uh, palm trees, which is not visible to the camera, but it's throwing some it's shadows the shadow. onto the ship. Wow, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So I'm trying to think about a few things like this. And since this is overgrown, I did add a few vines and roots here. So, but I, I will, when I take this into Photoshop later, that's when I add all the, all the additional vines and, and roots. And um, what I usually do is I render tons of passes like this. I render like a flat pass like this. Yeah. And then I have a kind of a, um, let's say like an ambient occlusion kind of thing where it's all about you know, just the shapes. And when I combine all these passes together, I get, I get, to a certain stage like this, for instance. I also render like a mask pass, so it's easy for me to yep. separate the things from, from one another. When I put this into, into Photoshop, I, I start off like with the ground. I have, have a few passes with different types of textures. I add uh, some plants. Uh, you have the shadow of the ship and the roots you saw on the render and the ship itself, which I also processing a few in a few passes here. Uh, I might add, you know, some emissives i might break it up a little bit more like destroy things a bit more um and even more and i just take pass it off the pass and i add more and more detail and some more emissives and glows and some shading just to give it a little bit if something feels slightly off i always go over and as some little shading and yeah. approximately how you would cut it out. Yes. So then that's when you have all these details. Um, most of this is happening in Photoshop in retrospect. Yeah. So it's a really interesting workflow. You basically model, what was the 3D program you were using? Was it Maya? No, this is 3D, this is 3D Studio Max. Uh-huh, okay. Yeah, but uh, any software works uh, yeah. for this, this is fine. Yeah, it's so just then a good, like a you, you take a snapshot of that in a way. Um, I assume the different elements are different layers to go into Photoshop, and then you do a lot of uh, manipulation in Photoshop to really. So you've got the perspective mm. built in uh, from when you mm. take that render pass. Um, and exactly, uh, I, I have a, a camera here. Yeah. So when I go to the camera view, I, I get it. Hang on. Uh, I see, I see the camera angle, what it will look like. And so it's every, every pass, every render is going to have the exact same camera angle. So yeah. it's consistent. Yeah. Yeah. And then so, yeah. for anybody who's not Photoshop um, uh, literate, the multicolored uh, pass, I think in, in, uh, in some programs, it's called a clown pass. I don't know. I don't know about this one. Um, but the idea of that is when you go into Photoshop, the different blocks of color you can use as a mask to block different elements out. So you can paint on certain elements without painting on others and apply certain effects and certain um, uh, uh, blends and things like that to them. Is that right? Exactly. So yeah, so this um, this mask pass at least helped me a lot to separate yeah. the like the organics from the metal. Yeah, uh, for instance, so it's easy for me to treat those things differently. And I remember uh, talking to you when you showed me a work in pro progress of this one, and I said, you know, I've remembered something. I remembered the uh, in in the scenario that involves uh, uh, this ship. There are two actually, but in in, in the prologue scenario. Uh, um, which we've been showing people recently, something happens and the engines uh, actually have the opportunity to fire. So it would be nice to have some little glow effects and some dark where they where they've scorched the um, uh, where they've scorched the ground. Uh, and you managed to sort of put that in uh, really really easily. And I yeah, guess that's that's, uh, that's that's due to the the workflow that you're using. Yeah, definitely. You know, and I, I use you know light sources in a realistic way. You 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 have the the lights from the engines, I can move them yeah. around if I like, you know, and get it as I, yeah, according to the, sometimes it has a fake, you know, depends on the for camera angle, like whatever looks <laughs> looks good from this angle. Yeah. So that's a good thing about board games. Like uh, most 
computer games, I have to make sure stuff works from every angle. And, yeah. You know, you might work underneath the ship, but um, here it's gonna. I use it for you know uh, our, our purpose. Yeah. Well, I, I, can... I would be really interested to find out uh, how many people and whether whether you have to be uh, artistically proficient and particularly with digital art to look at your finished work and understand that that started off as an actual 3D sculpt, which you've then rendered in order in order to uh, uh, do a lot of the heavy lifting, so to speak. I think most people would look at that and assume that you just painted it. Well, that's kind of the goal. If if that's the point, then yeah. great. Yeah. Uh, I don't mind three D work, but I try to I try to kind of find the uh, what, how should I put it? I don't want it to. I want it to look organic, and yeah. I don't want it to be. You know, if it's two D or three D, it doesn't matter. But it's um, it's all about yeah. Uh, taking advantage of both worlds kind of yeah. thing and if it looks organic and it doesn't look as as static and 3d that's then i made my job i guess sure well i think one of one of the recent netflix uh, cartoons i think it was the uh, the dragon prince uh, did the same. Apparently, they did most of the animation in 3D and then went over. And it's a sort of uh, uh, cartoon, you know, very flat color, flat shading uh, style of yep. cartoon. Um, but apparently, it was entirely animated in 3D, and then they just uh, they colored over those uh, uh, frames afterwards. Mm. So it's sort of a sort of a similar process in a way, I guess. Yeah, I guess. Um, yeah, that, that happens quite often. Mm. Uh, Hmm. But you, there's all, there's also ways of using 3D and render it uh, with some kind of filters to make it look, you know, cartoon as well. And yeah. um, I, I'm not doing. I'm, I mostly just take the 3D to a certain point, just to yeah. have like a, a foundation. And what's great with 3D is you, like I said, mentioned earlier, if you have tile-based mm -hmm. uh, things like Zombicide or the other type of games mm -hmm. that is, you, you have to have a perfect grid. Um, is is accurate is mathematically you know if you make a template that has certain modules that has certain uh, scales and sizes yeah it will match perfectly and tile seamlessly so yeah. that's that's also very beneficial uh, i can pick another example yeah please. Uh, let's see here i can look at the boat um, which was an interesting little piece of tech because yeah so same process here uh see i even use the same type of engine because you know yeah. it's the same universe i i assumed it was built by the same people oh i see yeah 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 <laughs> that's really cool because <laughs> this started off uh, my my friend uh, christoph lezinski uh from zen terrain they make uh uh they make um MDF, laser cut MDF uh, wargaming scenery. And this was a piece oh, cool. that he made for, for our game. Um, oh, cool. And I said, okay, it would be really nice to have a tile because of course the, the advantage there is that people uh, might find something like this really, I know a lot of the people who play our game, they will actually make their own tiles. They'll take our tiles, uh, but they'll actually model, you know, they're model makers and scenery builders. Uh, but this is going to be a really challenging thing to, to make as a model kit. Um, mm. And so uh, people might want to buy the, the, the more sort of hard edge, complicated uh, mechanical things in MDF uh, and then paint them and, and uh, uh, base them nicely. Um, but mm. it's really, it's fascinating to see, to see this in 3D because I feel like I know it really well already because I've had one in my hand. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And I'll, I also try to add a little imperfection to the things like, um, you see the boards, they're kind yeah. of uneven. Yeah. Yeah. It's not perfectly straight. It's like, it's, it's easy with, when you make 3D to make everything perfect. Yeah. So I try to make some. And you can really sense that things. when something's just too perfect. Yeah. So yeah, even though this is fairly fairly straight and uh, straightforward and you know technical, but I, where is something that makes sense? I might try to break it up a little bit and yeah. make it seem realistic. And uh, it's the same process here. Uh, you do the render process. You add some ambient occlusion to, to add you know a little darker in a little nooks and crannies. Um, and then I add some reflection maybe. Uh, and I also like to have the reflection on a separate layer. You see, I can choose how much reflection I'd like to have. Oh, yeah, yeah. 
Um, most people would just render this directly in 3D, but I'd like to go into Photoshop and be able to, okay, I want this to be more metallic, or I would like the, yeah. the round pieces here to be metallic. I can paint it in manually. So you've got multiple makes it... different renders with different materials, and then you can kind of mask them or subtract them or, or uh, erase with uh, at different levels of opacity to bring those effects more or less. Exactly. So I have full control of amp occlusion, shadows, uh, even the missives, like you see the light in the engine room, it's a separate oh, layer. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I can move this around if I like, yeah. and I can, I can choose how strong I'd like it to be. Yeah. So that gives me full control in, so it, you know, it, it's, it's, a, it means manual labor. <laughs> but yeah. I do like that, you know, if, if I need to tweak something, I don't have to do the full render again. I can just tweak that layer. Yeah. Yeah. So it's, it's, you know, it's benefits both me and, you know, the client, you know, because it's always, you know, time and schedules and yeah. to work efficiently. Uh, and also it gives this, this uh, more manual painting feel as well that yeah. you, you have to actually do it separately. And Sam, so when I have this thing, I have the water, I have the, 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 the surf, I have the shadows. Uh, and then I just add layer by layer. Here's the reflection layer, dirt layer, and the emissives. And uh, I also go over and paint and add a little bit of detail as well. But mm. that's how it turned out. Great. So there, there are there are two things in which I can immediately see the advantage in your workflow that we, that we're going to do. One is a tile that already exists, which is like a wreckage tile that people can scavenge from but it's also uh it's the wreckage of an old uh like crab or spider uh drone a little a little mm. robot and we've done a ruined uh version of it and uh why uh when uh you did that and you sent that through to me i thought I've got an idea for a scenario. We we have the wrecked version, and then over the course of the scenario, you find different components, and yeah, this is the one. And so then you uh, you build it, and uh, then we can just flip the tile and have the ruined version turn into the activated version. I think it'd be really uh, really fun. And and you said to me, yeah, that's no problem because <laughs> I've already modeled the thing in three D. So uh, mm. that's really really awesome. Because that's how you start out. You make it, you know, intact in like this. This is the first yeah. thing I made was this thing. Yeah. And then um, I had to break the poor guy, uh, break his legs. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. We're putting him back together. <laughs> yeah. So the so that that's the that's the easy way. So you know, if you want the the, the intact version, I I can I can pose it as a like, you know, yeah. uh, his legs are uh, rigged, so I can I can. I can easily, uh, I can even animate him if you like, you know, it's yeah. fairly easy. So yeah, so now he's barely recognizable, but um, pretty much the same process as the crash ship, uh, yeah. same routes. Um, and so now I can over. also see the the advantage in, in doing it this way. You can also, you can add lights to show that he's switching on and things like that quite easily. Mm. Um, yeah, very cool. So yeah, same thing here. You have the the render, you add yeah. the occlusion passes, and the reflection, the emissives that we can have some fun with. Some more dirt. Here's the yeah, mask. that's nice because it shows that he's uh, he might be ruined and overgrown, and uh, but there's still something working in there. That's the clue during the scenario. I think is they see the lights and they think, oh, maybe we can fix this. Exactly. So same process. And here you see he, he looks kind of purple like this. Yeah. That's uh, that's an adjustment I did in retrospect because when, when I had all these details added, like all mm -hmm. these things, when it was the original color, uh, there was very little contrast between the metal. It blended and the in metal. too much with the background. I see. I see. Hmm. Yeah. So that's also adjustments you have to take. So you yeah. know, if you want to adjust this one, then you know it might be too too yellow, for instance, or you yeah. Know, too. Yeah. So I try to think a little bit about you know complementary contrast and mm -hmm. how the how the piece works the best. Yeah. So another fun tile that we've we've got planned 
is like a, what I'm calling a tech bridge. So if you imagine uh, either side of the river, you've got the, these kind of um, um, <clears throat> emitters, uh, and to switch the bridge on, they're, they're off at the beginning of the scenario, but uh, to, um, uh, to, if you switch them on, it creates like an energy bridge, which is, which is glowing. Mm. Um, and so this is another thing, uh, we, can, we can do the, uh, the same kind of thing. You build, you build the fixed version and then have it a little bit broken and then we flip the tile. And so it's, it's clean and not quite pristine, but cleaner. Uh, and it has the energy uh, bridge with, with uh, probably a kind of hexagon pattern because everything in the future is always hexagons. Uh, may, maybe, maybe the odd octagon, uh, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, yeah, I'm really looking forward to, uh, to that one. Um, and I, I don't, I was, I was hoping. So we are recording this. When people watch it, it'll be in the middle of the week. But we're recording this on Sunday, and at the time of recording, we are approximately six hundred pounds away from unlocking uh, one of the stretch goals that I am most excited about. Um, which is that we will uh, print the board double-sided and we will have a flip side, which is going to be an interior cave environment. And it's going to actually be um, visually influenced by, um, because we'll have a scenario, um, which I'm not going to say too much about because it'll give the plot of the whole story away. Um, but there is a um, sort of tech cave interior um, artwork, which is basically the title art of the game, which I'm I'm going to steal the screen from you um, in just a, uh, for just a second and show you the artwork that we are talking about. Um, so I hope you can see that now. I see. Uh, yes. Okay. It's a beautiful so, concept. Yeah, yeah, it's great. It's by uh, uh, Gustav Eklund, uh, who has done a lot of the artwork for for this. He's not too far away from you. Where I mean, he's a long way away from you, but he's uh, also in Scandinavia, uh, in Sweden, uh, so yeah. the same corner of the world, anyway. Uh, and uh, he's done a lot of really beautiful concepts for uh, for Elia Chronicles, and this one. Um, I just uh, I looked at it and I thought we have to make a board like this. It would be awesome to have these glowing control panels because one one of the things that I love about your work and a, and a theme that I see coming through a lot and uh, um, is uh, uh, that you have a very nice sense of light. You do great glowing effects, but also lots of bouncing light and um, uh, ambient light. Uh, and uh, also um, Gustav has has a. Uh, a similar talent for he does lots of very atmospheric paintings with uh, where the light effects uh, not just the glowing effects but you know in this one the light that's coming from the shaft in the roof uh, mm. is is really evocative and it sort of bounces off things um, you've got that little bit of blue light in the water um, mm. so we're going to make a map uh, for this one and hopefully uh, rather than having it as a fixed map um, if we unlock another stretch goal later on, we'll make tiles for this one. And so the flip side of a lot of the jungle tiles that we've already done will be tiles that will fit into this, uh, uh, into this sort of um, area. And that means we won't just have one, but we'll have a number of different scenarios um, as uh, the players go through this underground drowned um, environment and then eventually find their way to this room and, and uh, uh, I won't say any more about what happens when they do, um, <laughs> but uh, I can really, I look at this and I can really see that you're going to do something exciting with it. This is a really, really interesting uh, scen uh, uh, scenario. I love, uh, you know, like like you said, like working with lights and shadows has always been my interest, even since art school in the 90, early 90s. I even made my own... Um, my own subject, which was uh, light and shadows, uh, uh -huh. where I really kept studying this. Um, and so ever since then, I always, if there's any situations like board games where I can really play with lights and shadows, that's that's something I really love. And here we have the reflective water, which might be obstructed by some some uh, uh, some some jungle leaves or what it was it called. Uh, uh, algae, yeah, something yeah. vegetation, uh, algae, vines, all kinds of, uh, all kinds exactly. of. Exactly, that makes for some really interesting situations, and uh, can't wait to get started on this. 
So yeah. Crossing so I, I I just while we're while we're nerding out about lighting effects, I want to show you some more <laughs> of uh, <laughs> I want to show you some more of um, <clears throat> uh, Gustav's work because I'm I'm a big I'm a big fan of his. Uh, yes, please. Uh, <laughs> here we go. So, uh, sort of, uh, can you see? Oh yes. Yeah. That's so really cool. cool. Little. I think this is one of the one of the dinos uh, from from the game. Uh, hmm. And then this is this is an old one, but I just I just really love it. Um, it's uh, got a lot a lot of atmosphere. Definitely. Uh, those those uh, yellow and look strong colors uh, to, against the uh, you know the, the the more like yellow and greenish background that's gonna that's gonna be interesting yeah yeah and then this is another this was almost the title image in the end I went for the uh, the, the room we were talking about but this was hmm. this was pretty close as well and we have this dino in the game as well uh, the the core box comes with it as a standee but you can buy the actual model um if you if you uh if you're into miniatures and you like that sort of thing mm, cool uh, and then uh, this is one of my absolute favorites this this one feels um uh it's uh yeah very very atmospheric but uh it's it's almost like the the water lilies you know um <laughs> but uh yes uh, i slight um how do we uh, stop sharing? Uh, but uh, yeah, I think we're uh, <laughs> um, back uh, back to what we should be talking about, which is uh, um, uh, your fantastic uh, tile work. And so uh, yeah, we can. I think we can do some interesting things with the uh, with the board, uh, and hopefully, maybe even by the time people are watching this, we'll have unlocked the uh, the tile package as well to make some flip side uh, some more tiles. Uh, but you're going to be in e in any case you're going to be doing some more tiles the bridge i mentioned also and some of the uh um some of the scenarios uh, are based around a particular uh feature and so it's good to have those uh, those unique tiles hmm. looking forward to that that's uh i'll be crossing my fingers for the um that it goes the right way for the stretch goals yeah well we're, yes. we're doing we're doing uh we're doing okay so far so uh, fing fingers crossed for that um so yeah. i think i think uh, that's probably all we've got time for uh yeah. henning it's been a real uh pleasure to have you on i look forward to uh getting the rest of the things done for um uh, for this game and hopefully working again with you in the future and, and thanks for doing this interview as well i know you're, you're busy and don't always have time for these things but i know uh the, the backers of the Kickstarter have really been clamoring to, to know more about the tiles. Great, oh, I appreciate it. And thank you, it's been, it's a great project to work on. And uh, yeah, take care and be, be careful, uh, stay, in, stay indoors. Yeah, yeah, that's, <laughs> that's what we're doing. The, the cat isn't very happy, she likes to have her own time. <laughs> oh yeah, of course. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, guys, thanks very much for watching and I uh, hope you enjoyed it. Let us know what you thought in the comment section.